Uh, there's one person on yeah online right now that we just went on. So that one person's gonna be our gauge. How does it look on your side? Because it's the first time we actually do a split screen, and we're having a couple of issues with the rotation and um, orientation of the of the camera. So we'll wait for a couple of people Unless to get that here. One person is me. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> it. <You're> probably right. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, I just got the notification too. Yeah. He's our editing producer. Yeah. My engineer. Now we have two. Teaser live to let people know that I was that we're going to be live here today. And when I went inside, I noticed my Wi-Fi was never on. Got it. What's up, Ohio? Are we oriented correctly? Like, how do we look? Are we sideways or are we like correct? Oh, ten people now. Sending blessings from Tani. Jamaica. Hello, Tony. How do we look on your end, Tony, with the phone? Does it? Are we on on horizontal or vertical? Yeah. We're fine. Okay. Perfect. How about how about the quality? Because I know yesterday was really bad. It was very fuzzy and well, we're up to ten people. Horizontal. Perfect. So okay, because in nice. our end is vertical. <laughs> yeah, it's different. It's different. Totally different on our end. Then, well, hey, we figured it out, right? That's I how feel, we learned. What was that? There was a, a show a long time ago back in like. I mean, I was a little. The Brady kid. Bunch. No, it was a, it was a show, and and, and uh, Goldie Hawn was in it, uh, and Hollywood. Yeah. Hollywood What's up, Square. Joe? I feel awesome. like awesome. Thanks, Tom. Hey, Joe. Perfect. So I'm glad. All right, we're gonna Good. wait a little okay. bit before we. By the way, I don't know if you have your drink. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Ding. Mine is a is a afternoon Bloody Mary. I break rules. <laughs> I've got I've got a little bit of uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Mm. Hello, Tampa. Right between us two, there's you're in Jacksonville, right? You're on the top. Yeah. And I'm well, the... but, but we're both Atlantic, like East Coast. That's and right. And we're in their West Coast. Hibiscus tea. tea. Oh, I that's love really hibiscus tea. Mm -hmm. I love hibiscus tea. It has really good um, uh, properties for your heart. For your kidneys, for your hair. Um, Hi, yeah, PC. It's great. Yay, you made it. She Hi, didn't PC. She, she didn't know she was going to make it. Yeah, uh, nice. hibiscus tea. I recommend it to people for their hair and nails. It's a drink because it's really good. It's a great organic alternative. I don't even know where my camera is. Oh, filming horizontal. I mean, uh, vertical. Yeah, but that's what I was saying like before. When it's turned horizontal, I feel like I've got like cross eyes because I'm looking at the screen, but the camera's over here, and I feel like I need to. Hi, go Kelly. In there, so. Aloha. What's up, Kelly? So this is the first time we've done it like where we're in our own space, right? Uh, usually we do this together. And so not a lot of people have seen, one, your, like, terrace back patio area. And not a lot of people have seen, like, my greenhouse. So I think Which it's interesting. Which is pretty cool. Cool yeah. backgrounds. Hi, New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, now that people can see check, your greenhouse. Check out this monster here. It's so tall. This guy's <laughs> you need a ladder to stuff. get up there. <laughs> yeah. And, and I have to repot it. Oh it's, my God. it's growing out of the pot. It's it's so big. I'm gonna need like six hands to do this, but um, should be fun. Guys, if you catch me looking down, it's because that's where I see Josh, and that's where I can read. Hey, Teresita. That's where hey, I can Teresita. read your comments. So I'm I'm actually trying to look at you guys. So eye contact, virtual eye contact. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, yesterday, excuse me, <clears throat> yesterday I realized when I was recording, I wasn't connected to my Wi-Fi. 
and I was ranting and raving about my new like satellite Wi-Fi from Starlink, and I was never even connected to it. Hey, James. So we got uh, you, we're, we're the, up to the pot on people. Good. The pot on my big dendrobium here is I think it's a 14 inch pot, but I'm um, going to repot it in one of those big plastic wash tubs from Walmart, and I'm drilling a bunch of holes in the bottom and then the sides putting big lump charcoal in the bottom and then I'll fill around the sides with some um, of my regular inorganic mix with the Lika sponge rock charcoal, um, you know, just basically the top and then that way it has lots of free draining uh, media and because it's been grow out growing, growing outside of this pot for the last like year. So it's definitely do for a repot badly but it's super healthy it's yeah i mean how do I you repot it. a how do you repot a 12 foot tall plant i don't know <laughs> my letter that has the roots that i need it and it was tipping over and i ended up cutting it but i think she's gonna do well violetta um, yeah, it's the one that I, that was really really tall, but I had to cut it. I wanted to wait till after the blooms would uh would this, fade out, but that's so one. pretty. I love them. Look at that one. <laughs> they get so tall. That's that's the only thing I'm oh not crazy God. about. I wish it would stay compact. Saludos, Ismael. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, good lord, that thing's. I mean, by the, the roots are touching the ground, and it's probably. It's probably 10 foot tall from root, the bottom of the root to the top. You had to pick dendrobiums as your favorite. <laughs> I'm not dendrobium. Yeah. Uh, well, Violetta. I mean. Violetta's because you're more dendrobium guy, not a Vanda guy, right? Or do you have a lot of Vandas? No, no, I don't have a lot of Vandas, but Vi I, uh, I got a Violetta and I got a, someone gifted me a really nice one. And I mean. Because that's it's to got, me, that's the tallest one of the Vandas, at least the ones yeah. that I have. They get well, like, you know. <laughs> and you know the arachnid. I like big plants. So, I cannot lie. All right, so. Plant. Uh, other stuff like feeding fertilizer and stuff like because it all kind of all works together yeah i mean they're they're all like supplements really so when you think about it like your your fertilizer it doesn't need it to survive yes it helps it grow but it is supplemental it's not necessary like uh like light and water um right. but <clears throat> like me i like to eat plants like to eat too and some plants like to eat more than others. So it really just depends. Um, and then, of course, we'll talk about um, different types of not only fertilizer, but insecticides and fungicides. And then we'll also talk a little bit about um, like bactericides because fungus and bacteria are completely different and they affect your plant completely differently also. Arachnids also different from mites. Yes. The take of killing spider mites with a pesticide that all those Absolutely. insects and pests and uh, spiders are arachnids. It won't do anything to them. So that's a that's one that is such an easy fix, but a lot of people fail it because they, they use the wrong, you know, spray for the plant. Yeah, so let's let's um Let's jump off into like talking about miticides and mites first. Um, okay. Like you said, the um, you know spider mites are in the arachnus family. They're not insects, and so if you're only spraying for insects, you're not controlling those spider mites. And you know other um, tropical plants like philodendrons, anthuriums, monsteras are what I call mite magnets. And because, you know, 
they are tropical plants. Um, a lot of your other like um, like fias, some uh, your peristerias, elias, oh, yeah. <laughs> anything. <laughs> Your Cycnokes, Mormodes type orchids with those fine leaves. Let me see if I can find one here also. Um, and by the anything... way, the peristerias, which you told me about this, uh, for people who have peristerias, if you see the leaves fall out, that's normal on them. Because I thought, yeah. I, had, I, thought I had spider mites. They that will go fun. deciduous. Um, We're doing great today, Sa. Thank you for joining speak, us. Speaking of peristeria, um, I do have them in two-inch pots for a reasonable price. Oh, so, very cool. I didn't know you had you had peristerias. <clears throat> Last time you didn't have yeah. any. No, I didn't. Because I had asked you is, if you can get some is, from me. You didn't have any. Excuse I me. wasn't sure. I'm important. And I just happened to stumble across um, some of them. Some of them I will grow out, and but some of them I am selling. But they have the fine leaves, and so uh, spider mites are really attracted to these really uh, thin, uh, delicate leaves. And and th so they'll sit on the underside. Yes, PC, Perseria elata, the Holy Ghost orchid or dove orchid. And, and they'll start munching on the bottom. And if you take your finger or a white cloth or anything and run your finger along the bottom and see like a cinnamon color, you have spider mites. Um, they'll also get on like, um, uh, let's see, I said the phias, um, grammatophyllums. Grammatophyllums are bad about getting spider mites on them too. Um, and also what I find, <clears throat> For those who keep their orchids, and, and not just orchids, plants, because this, this stuff is not just made for orchids, it's for plants as well. Um, when you keep them indoors, like in my salon, I have a lot of plants. So I have a couple of aeroids, I have a couple of, of succulents. So even in my salon, I'll get the sticky white fly. Is it the white flies that's like the sticky, or is that the spider mites that leave like the sticky webbing underneath? That's a spider mite, isn't it? That's a spider mite, yeah. Yeah. So my philanopsis. Yes. Last year, uh, I have two philodontists there that do great. And last year, um, I noticed I went to move it, and I felt like a stickiness. And when I looked under, it was filled, filled, filled with uh, with that. So I was like, oh, my God, what do I do? Do I take it to the ranch, and I spray it over there? or And I, de I decided to use when I lived in my apartment, and I carried all my uh, plants inside. I bought Yeah, yeah, and non-toxic spray for indoors. Yeah, look. Well, indoor or outdoor, because seven or outdoor seven, exactly. Seven is so broad spectrum. Um, you can use it on like tomatoes. You can use it on orchids. You can use it on basically any plant. Um, but it is it is a topical. And not a systemic, right? Um, you gotta I, use it I, more I, often. At least in my, yeah, in my yeah, yeah. experience, I use it more. And to me, honestly, Josh, I've never had or killed anything with this. I have sprayed some of my orchids, like when they've had really bad infestation, I'll spray them like every other day in case there's eggs or anything laying around, and I'll yeah. do it for like a whole week, and the plant just looks beautiful afterwards. Like you can really see it clean out, and it, it doesn't really disturb or, or do anything negative to the plant that I know of. Right, right, and and then what I I mean I use I use heavy chemicals because I have thousands of plants, and I need to make sure that I I don't use anything. I use abamectin, which is a miticide. It's a and it's topical. It's not a systemic. Um, but it also control. It's good for thrips. It's also good for and it's in a miticide and insecticide. So in and oh, abamectin nice. is a is a chemical. So anything that has abamectin in it will control your mites as well. But like I said, mites are completely different than insects. So you have to make sure that you're spraying for both or get something that covers both. Um, because like my, 
mites are bad. They'll do a lot of damage if they're not controlled. And if they're not wiped out, then they can wreak havoc. Even though you have no other insects, miticides can sit there, damage your leaves, and um, cause long-term damage to your plants. Um, what is the then, ratio next to that? Um, to the one this you... is uh, three milliliters per gallon, so it's two teaspoons. Like a teaspoon? No, no, uh, just not even one teaspoon. Really? Wow, it's very, yeah. very potent. Yeah, so it's it's pretty potent. It's pretty potent. Um, and so I'll switch it up between using this as a topical and then using something that's systemic as well. Um, just just to make sure. I don't use this too often just because like the, the mites really, um, they like a dry atmosphere. They don't like a wet atmosphere. And now that we're getting into like uh, spring and summer and fall, it's going to be watering season because it gets hot in my greenhouse. Like right now it's, it's still like 98, or I mean, sorry, 88 degrees. Um, but it was about 90, 90 degrees in here earlier. So, but I have lots of air movement, which makes it dry. Things dry out. I, have <laughs> I need to put fans. I'm suffocating. <laughs> How about, let's talk about, um, Permatrol, because this is one that <clears throat> that I used to use a lot. I'll use it every now and then yep. for a preventative. How do you feel about this? Uh, Permatrol is okay. Permatrol is okay as a pesticide. Um, I, I believe it has permethrin in it, which actually is... Um, it does pretty... permethrin? Permethrin? I don't know if it shows. No, I can't see it. It's blurry. It has 10% permethrin. So permethrin is good. And that's what you can actually wash your clothes in permethrin and before you go like into jungles or camping and stuff. And um, it actually acts as a mosquito deterrent. And so oh, permethrin wow. is good, but it's also safe for your skin. It's safe for pets. It's safe for, you know, um, if you have children. Um, so that's good. And so permatrol is, is good for that reason. I haven't used it a lot, but, um, you know, the, and we all have different needs and different like criteria we're trying to meet. Some people want completely 100% organic. Some people want something that's not, um, as stinky because they have as asthma conditions or, um, they're sensitive. Uh, to, to other things, and then other people just want something that's going to work and work fast. So depending on what spectrum you lie on, you know, use what you're comfortable with. Now, as we're talking about this, let's go ahead and put the big disclaimer out. Make sure you're using personal protective equipment. You're using a mask. You're using goggles. Cover that head. Um, use long sleeve shirts, gloves, pants, shoes, socks. Once you're done spraying, I don't care if you're spraying just something that's completely organic. Uh, one, you don't want to breathe those other kind of organic. Yeah, chemicals or wear it. <laughs> or, or wear it. And then, but if you're, especially if you're spraying chemicals, if it's bad for bugs, it's bad for us. Um, and then also once you're done, shed those clothes, right in your laundry, um, and put those clothes in the washer to wash them right away and jump directly in the shower and just and and just wash i mean it, it's yeah i, I throw them right in the I typically <clears throat> i typically will um oh my gosh i just had a lizard like drop right in my face sorry <laughs> you have lizards i have squirrels <laughs> oh man like that that's the first time that's happened though sorry squirrel um but lizard <laughs> Oh my God. Um, yeah. If it's bad for insects, it's bad for us. Go ahead and take a shower and, and wash off and, and clean up. Because, How do you feel about Bayer's three in one? Um, 
I've got a full bottle right here. So I don't, you like it? I don't. No, I used it once and then I never used it again. That's why it's a full <laughs> bottle. Uh, That's why I'm asking you because it's either new or you don't or it's no good to use. No, no. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it. I found it didn't. You know, it's a three in one insecticide, fungicide, miticide. I've I grow um, some monstera outside, and they're really susceptible. Like I said, I call them the mite magnets. And um, I had an issue with with mites last year, and I sprayed it like three weeks in a row, and it didn't even touch the mites on it. Um, oh, and so okay. I said, well, you know, I so I'm I'm not impressed with it. If it works for you, fine, great. Um, but I need stuff that. Um, peroxide, because I know a lot of people use peroxides, uh, peroxide as a fungicide, alternative to fungicide being more organic, and it also kills uh, harmful bacteria. But I yeah, so that is the like uh, it's a like a hard shell scale. Um, yeah, well, those, I only had a couple the other day that I saw and I sprayed with a peroxide. And when the next day I just touched it and it was powder. So I don't know if that had to do anything with the peroxide or. I mean, usually peroxide is used more as a bacteria side um, or to control fungus. Um, but because fungus and bacteria are more single cell um, issues, whereas in scale is, is multi-cell um, insects. So let's, let's go ahead. You want to go ahead and jump into insecticides? Sure. Let's do it. I don't have any well, here because I haven't really... Talking about this. I've only been um, using this as an insecticide, honestly. And, <clears throat> excuse me, my... Of the cats and cat, but I there's yeah 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 it's like a four oh nine juice something killer juice or something like that yeah the killer I, juice that they talk about on um on Florida orchid growing I do something similar to that, but it's not really a killer juice. But sometimes, like when it's a heavy seasons, I do have to use something like orthine, which is that's I had an infestation that was so crazy that I was like, I'm going to have to use orthine. So I use orthine as a extreme measure, but I try not to. And if yeah. and if it's contained, if it's only one plant, I'll do like a point sprayer and I'll just contain it there. I won't spray all over the place because it's very... Yeah very uh, toxic and the fumes are just very strong. Yeah, so so permatrol's permatrol's okay, but it's it's a topical spray. Right. Um and so whereas in I like to use personally, I need something that's systemic. So that way it gets into the system of the plant and it's going to prevent issues instead of just when I have issues, it's going to basically Cock eradicate out. the problem. Raquel, oye mi amor. It's going to eradic eradicate the, the problem, but then you have to do it more often. Um, so I like I, I agree with you. I like systemic way better. But you know yeah, why? It's so, not as much work. Exactly. Well, and then it also covers you because now we're getting into spring season. Uh, thrips, exactly. man, thrips have been bad this year. Yes. <laughs> hey, Hosanna. Um, thrips have been bad. Hey, Hosanna. Um, you know, and then what I really like to do, I've only found one thing that really takes care of scale, and that is the big brother of orthene, and that's Safari. So there's Safari, oh. there's orthene. Okay. Safari, oh. Safari, orthene, yes, will they say it controls scale, but Safari is more potent. And so if you do like 
and it's a systemic also. So if I find any plants, like if I'm buying plants from other collectors or buying plants wholesale and bring before I bring them into my greenhouse or my growing area, I have a, a place where I seclude plants and quarantine them. And I'll get a that's what I got. A half gallon sprayer. I love it. And those. I'll mix some of that up and I'll just spray it uh, for <laughs> for three weeks, once a week for three weeks. And that will errat that's the only thing I found er that will eradicate um, mm -hmm. and take care of, of the uh, the bias duval scale. Yeah, and it's, it's the white it's so scale, many, not the brown scale. There's so many different seasons. Yeah. Because if you only prepare then you start using like me, the same one for other things and it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, now let's, let's jump on over to uh to fungicide because I know that that's one, especially <clears throat> with orchids, you get a lot of that here in Florida. The Thai yeah, fungus. Get so much rain. There's been a lot. Well, lately it's been dry. It hasn't been as rainy as it was a while back, but we had just a cold snap. You had a cold snap too, right? You guys went down yeah. to 30 and it uh, rained over. No, it rained we, got down, we got down to like 40, 40s. like low 40s. Um, but I haven't even opened up my greenhouse. So when I say open it up, I, my greenhouse has is all plastic, but I have plastic sides that I take off for spring, summer, fall. So basically I'm waiting for a consistently like 55 to 60 degrees. And um, because big guys like this need to stay <laughs> above, above 60 degrees. Otherwise they'll drop a lot of their leaves. And I hate when that happens. And stuff. Yeah. So your hard canes, your hard canes and stuff um, are really temperamental. And I have a lot of uh, very rare species that I have here also that I've been growing for some more than 10 years and, and, and they're still tiny. So, um, you know, so when, pick. when we use, let's say when we use a fungicide, cause I have this, that I, this is like my go-to something as a preventative five yeah. 20. I, that, <clears throat> it's a bacteria side. It's a fungicide, a virus side. It's, bunch of stuff algicide so yeah. i do i use this when it's a very light season we don't have a lot of like fungus or anything that that i have to worry about so how do you feel about that as a preventative do you think that's um, a good one it's it's not a it's not a preventative because it's not systemic so it's not going to prevent anything from happening oh, okay. it's a mm -hmm. topical and it's really only a fungicide and an algicide it's not a true bactericide, and and then there's also there's nothing False that advertisement. There's False nothing advertisement. That, yeah, <laughs> there's nothing that can that can cure virus. So it's not a viricide either. Um, unfortunately, why do they put that? It's crazy. Um, you know it. Look, I'm not sure. Maybe because it's it's used as a. Um, as a it's more of a cleaner than anything it's soapy it's very soapy and it runs very very soapy. i don't know i've always been told that that's good as a preventative but it makes sense if it doesn't go into the cell of the plant then what is it preventing it's going to wash right off so it's not exactly. really preventing anything. exactly so, so basically if it rain people when people say hey i use fizan 20 i say well just make sure every time it rains you're going out after that rain if you don't have lots of good air movement and that's why i tell people air air movement is really important and that's um especially growing orchids um you need a lot of air movement because if if water is sitting on your plant tissue aka your leaves or root not so much your roots but your leaves overnight it can cause you know infections uh Lots of there's so many different types of fungal infections. Oh, yeah. um, it's crazy, and so I tell everybody um, that's use a systemic. Use something like um, thiamil 
which is you can't really Fuck. find. I was going to ask right you how you felt about thiamil because I have diphane, this one, and, and I hardly yeah. ever used it. Is this the same as thiamil? No, it's not. It, it, it's not. it reacts a little bit differently. Um, my go-to for fungus and everything is banrot. My favorite. And you, yep, <laughs> you can get it at Ophi, Orchid Supply. Um, if they're out of it, there's a couple other places you can get it. But I always try to send everybody to a OFE, Orchid Supply, and Homestead. Um, short plug for Carlos and Chris. Um, <laughs> um, and and boys you know, while, while we're on that this weekend, make sure you, everybody, if you're in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, or you want to take a road trip, OFE is having their their orchid sale. Unfortunately, I'm not there this weekend. Um, but that's they why are you're having, there doing the the video. <laughs> if not, yeah. you'd be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's lots of good vendors there. I know. Um, uh, Sierra Madre is there, Lady Vanda is there, Orchids in Bloom. I'm not sure if Roxy at three, Orchids 365 is there um, and some other vendors as well. So go check out and support your local small business um, as well. Um, but but back on track, Banrod Ban Rod is, Ban Rod is a mixture of thiamyl and dithane with some other chemicals added in. And it is, it is one of the very few uh, fungicides that can help prevent fusarium from spreading in your orchids as well. I love that. And it actually controls uh, Thai fungus. You can't get rid of it, right? Thai fungus, yeah. once you get it, it's there for life. Yeah. So this is the only thing that actually controls it. Because my Violetta yeah. has she got a, I, I, yes. you know, I've learned this. I took, first of all, I, I used this for the first time. And by the way, you guys, I'm sure you're going to want to know, this is a little steep, but that is because, I don't know if you can see the price there, $96. It's because it really works. And you only use it once a month, whereas opposed to the other stuff you're using like a lot more often and it goes for, this, this yeah. will last a pretty long time, huh? Cause I, I oh oh yeah like I mean even with thousands of plants like it my, it'll last you a couple of years at least at yeah. least um, so what you can do is you know you and your friend go in and go half seas on it and yeah. then split it up and then you both have a really good product because you know I think of well one I do it I've grown orchids for twenty years. And I have lots of plants you can't find anymore, or I have rare species that you can't get anymore. And no. so mm -hmm. this is an investment to protect my other investments as well. So um, how do you detect hey, Donna, the uh, The only way you can detect fusarium is when you go to divide and you cut into the rhizome. And fusarium usually shows itself by having like a pink, or reddish, purplish uh, ring around the rhizome when you cut into it. So when you're dividing a plant and you oh, cut into it and you see that, that purple ring, that's fusarium. And it's and it's mainly a um, um, like a terrestrial kind of uh, fungal issue. So um, if you have plants that are sitting on the ground. Or I know a, they had really big issues in Panama with their banana production, and fusarium was was wiping out a lot of banana plants. I think that was mainly like the Chiquitas brand. What about copper? I know some people use like a copper base. Copper, you want to be very copper is great, but you want to be very careful with copper base uh, fungicides because like your dendrobiums. If you spray copper on dendrobiums, you're going to kill the plant. You're going to set it back. Um, you know why I ask? Because we use it. Uh, I think Lewis uses a copper base organic fungicide for the yeah. guava plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a really bad case of that fungus. Yeah. And it's like destroying um, everything. But copper is very bad for dendrobiums spe specifically. <laughs> um, I think there's a, 
um, a couple others that they don't like the the plants don't like the copper. Um, so I stay away from copper altogether, and that's why I use banrot. Um, I'll use. What's your ratio on banrot? One teaspoon per gallon. One teaspoon? Somebody told yeah. me two. I did my first application was two teaspoons or a gallon. So I'm glad it's less. Yeah. Because I'll save more because, you know, it'll, it'll stretch it out. And I, and I bought the nine gallon sprayer. Yeah. So that way it's much easier to, to just mix in and spray everything. Yep. And that's why I tell everybody, you know, you don't have to like mix up a whole gallon. You can get like uh, a regular pump sprayer if you only have a couple of plants and just, and just mix up what you need and then just make sure you use everything that you mix up because it doesn't have a good shelf. Aloha, life. Jeremy. Thanks um, for joining. Get a half gallon sprayer, get a one gallon sprayer. I use a four gallon sprayer, but I am getting ready. Now that I have plants growing in multiple locations, um, I'm getting ready to, to get like an eight to 10 gallon sprayer. No, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, you... You, you can take them outside and spray them like on a back patio or um, and stuff, but um, you want to let them. I always spray at night because one, I have good airflow out here, and two, like it's not like you're going to have a fungal issue with something that's controlling fungus, anyways. So, um, but I, I do a monthly spraying. Um, usually the first of the month that I know that's, it's time to spray for insects and fungicides. So I will, you can combine like the banrot with an insecticide and do just one big spray once a month. That's a good thing to mention because I do that sometimes. And, you know, I forget to tell people that you can actually mix fungicide and pesticide. You just can't mix yeah. like a fertilizer. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want to. And, yeah, and because. Insecticide. Sorry, you're breaking up. So, so that that's a really good point because what happens is, uh, if you mix up fertilizer and then you throw in something like uh, fungicides and insecticides, you can cause everything to kind of get out of whack and fall out of suspension, and then you're basically working with a uh, something that doesn't absorb and grasp on together and then um i'll segue into it's important when you're spraying like a an, an insecticide go to the dollar store get some palm yeah. olive <laughs> and just put a couple drops in there it's a surfactant and so what surfactants do is actually it helps spread the um everything evenly distributed Whereas, and if you don't use a surfactant, then it, the molecules don't mesh. Oh, they're um, having a conversation. Yeah, I know. We're having, we're, I'm multitasking. I was like, oh, hono, hono. Um, <laughs> um, and so um, with, you know, when I, when I mix up my fungicides and insecticides, um, I put just a squirt of palm olive in there. And it seems that the palm olive works better. Um, this was an old, you know, Bill Toms, who's, was a, who's a great grower, um, a commercial grower. He does the, um, um, the plant potion number nine and stuff like that. Oh, and I know so what you're talking always, about. He always yeah. said, use palm olive. It's, it's yes, the he's best. the one that told me it's to use cheap. it. Yeah, you know, and so you can get it at the dollar store. And I'm like, okay, cool. And it'll, I mean, look, I've had this for like three years. And you it, know, it delivers it everything nice. Yeah, it it's makes a, it's everything a nice. evenly distributed. Yeah. Yeah. Is your, uh, is your chauffeur to the to the fungicide and your fertilizer? Yeah. Terracita. Um, there's not really any good sources on this um, for book wise. Nature Nails Channel. You can always message me at the Orchid Den. You, you have my phone number. Um, or you can just watch our videos, you know. And just, you know, the questions that you guys leave me on the comment thread through all my videos, 
I mean, I try to remember them all and then I discuss them with Josh to then bring it to you guys. So that way, because it's really hard for me to answer everybody and to give you guys, like when you ask me, like, how do I, you take care of a certain thing? I may not be able to answer everyone because, you know, it's a lot of typing. <laughs> yeah, There's only so much typing I can do. And uh, as I put more videos, it gets harder and harder to respond to everyone to the previous video. So I tomorrow or such, I did a little trip to to um, Creative Gardens. You know Creative Gardens. Yeah. You met Renee from um, yeah, yeah. Office. Yep. So I I got some things from them that I, I tried to show yesterday the island, but in the Creative Gardens video, you can really see the video. It turns out really nice. Yeah. So and that got fixed. And so while everybody's here, let's send everybody, make sure you like this video. And if you want to share it, share it on your Facebook, share it on your social media, your YouTube, uh, your Instagram, um, and everything. So make sure yeah, you the thing is, that people like don't button. realize, like I, I try to watch other YouTubers because I, I want to, you know, support them. And I know, I know the importance of, of liking and subscribing. The thing is that when you do that, it actually helps the channel grow more. So I'm able to give you better episodes, you know, because they pay you a little bit. Yeah, how does... How, do, how does that work? Where's my cut? <laughs> I'll give you that cutting you want it. <laughs> <laughs> nah. As a matter of fact, I did find I, on the bottom that dendrobium you wanted. I was looking at it yesterday and it has a piece growing out. And I was like, you know, I can I could cut it if you wanted. It's yours. No, well, yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. I'm I was because because I know you like that dendrobium. <laughs> I was just joshing you anyways. Um, no, but I do. I, I saw the thing yesterday and I got excited. I'm like, yeah, it's giving babies because it yay. only had that one that one cakey on the on the cane. And it's still kind of like it's too tiny yet. But it's a beautiful no. it's a beautiful dendrobium. That's the one I got from okay. uh, Max. which which segues into an, another issue. OK. Um, Hello, like Netherlands. When, when you have a Nosmum or any anything that produces lots of kikis. Um, like a phylum, PRDI, a lot of your dendrobium section, dendrobium. Um, leave your kikis on for, for a couple years because the second year, it'll usually bloom with your um, mother plant. So if you leave it on for two or three years, it'll bloom a lot faster and be better Really, um, when you remove it from the mother plant to pot it up. I did not know that. Yeah. Like all my kikis, I leave on for for a couple years or sometimes. Okay, even then I'm not years. touching them because I started cutting yeah. kikis and I'm like, you know, why? Yeah. I really don't need to. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let it be. And then until it's got a good root system and everything, just make sure you're um, treating it appropriately. Let's talk about feeding. We haven't. And then we can like after the feeding, we can close the channel because we're already on 43 minutes. I don't want to keep it over an hour. Did we talk about in insecticides already? Yeah, we yeah. did. We talked yeah, we did. A little bit. We haven't talked about feeding. Cool. Feeding is very important. My drink is almost gone. Oh, you're you're in trouble. <laughs> That's why you need to go. <laughs> um, every you know, there's so many types of fertilizers on the market. It's it's really hard, and people are like, oh, like there's a magic number, and there's no magic number. As long this as my magic number. <laughs> yeah. As That's long as it. you're getting Hey Svika. As Hello, long as you're Israel. getting appropriate Hello. nutrient, phosphorus, and potassium. So you're you have three numbers nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, as long as you have an evenly balanced. Um, some people I personally use Peter's Excel 15515. And it has calcium and magnesium added into it. 
But that the only reason I use that is because I can get it in 25 pound bags. Whereas in like your Miracle Road, you don't have to be 20, 20, 20, all your other water soluble stuff. Um, as long as you're feeding, I mean, you're you're doing better than half of everybody else out there. you're using except for um uh, i use this with a 20 20 20 yeah my cow mag yeah it's basically the same I just, thing this is what i do every week in a to a yeah. beach to a gallon. and then and then once a month i will use i will spray the like a bloom booster and it's people people are yeah. like people are like oh you use a bloom a bloom booster that forces blooming and i'm like no it doesn't force blooming all bloom boosters do it's a high phosphorus fertilizer and it allows more water to be taken up by the root system into the plant so remember that most of our flowers are water and so when we use something with a high phosphorus um number it it's going to allow a, a lot of water to be uptaken by those roots and get and get water up to the flower and so then you're going to have bigger flowers you're going to have more abundant flowers and um and so those all those cytokinins um are pulling water from the roots to the flower instead of water to plant growth okay that's good to know. You know, you're kind of, I don't know if it's breaking up on the other side, but on it's, my side, you were like kind of freezing. I, I see you freezing up a little bit here and there. So. Okay. I guess it's from each other's views. And um, what was else? What was the other thing I was going to ask you? Do you, like the one that I use a booster is a 10, 30, 20 or 10, yeah, 10, 20, 30, 10, I think it is. I can't remember now. I have it back yeah. there. I didn't bring it. I mean, as as long as it as long as the 10 30 20 i think it is as long as the middle number is is higher than the others then then yeah you just want a high phosphorus yeah it's, it's a 10 30 20 yeah i i was laughing because i'm i'm reading they're having conversations jeremy yeah yeah Microbium he sent me, how many flowers it had. Not one flower was damaged. Not one. It was in mid. I pulled it out. I go, it looks. So I give the award for best packaging to Mr. Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. From SW Orchids. He he is a pretty good. Yeah, he takes his time. You can tell he really takes his time. Oh, uh, yeah. I've, I've you guys were asking me. Jeremy. You guys were asking me um, how to get a hold of Jeremy, his website. His website is, he said, is outdated. So the best way to get a hold of him to purchase is through Instagram. Ah, oh, you got one of those. Neifert, those are really nice. Neifert he sent West. me one. And I've got yes. some uh, blue lip, which are the ceruleus. I've got five different, five different color varieties of the anosmum. And they, they smell them. They smell so amazing. Yeah. That's it, Dominic? Yeah. But yeah, those, his, his anusmums are, are really beautiful. I really, yeah. Them. I would love to visit his nursery someday. Let's, let's plan a trip to uh, Hawaii. And let's do it. I, and, I'm ready. and then and then me and Jeremy can go surfing together too. Because he's a surfer. You surf? You surf? Yeah. I, I don't surf make, at all. I, I used to make I, surfboards. Yeah, I I learned that when I travel now, why look for trouble? Enjoy your vacation. <laughs> lagging from Nelson's side. It's lagging a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I'm actually connected today to my Wi-Fi. Come on over, guys. Yeah, Kelly. <laughs> I, I would definitely take you up on that offer. <laughs> Sweet. All right. I mean, all we have to do is get a, get airplane tickets. 
airplane tickets and uh I can rent a board when I'm over there. I don't care. <laughs> I uh I've always wanted to try and, and, and learn how to do that, but I know I won't like it because I went snowboarding and I hated it. Hated it. Oh, hated no. it. Dude, we can go I, I can't remember what island Jeremy's on. But I used to go to Oahu. I've been to Oahu a few I think times. he's in Oahu. And um if we I I'll get you up first time on a longboard at Waikiki Beach. I don't know. And then we'll go have then we'll go have my ties at Dukes. That I can do. See, that's yeah. a sport that I do very well. I have yeah. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so well, look. Finished. I, I know. <laughs> uh see, yeah. Perfect. Oahu, yeah. Yeah, we can go we can go to uh we can go surf at uh uh Waikiki beach we can go surf at uh dukes we can go to um there's some other places i can't tell you about yeah you know food, you know kelly <laughs> they say you know dukes yeah i know dukes a little too well um but yeah um I think oh, we covered everything. I think no, we covered an, pretty much everything that we wanted to talk about. So that's pretty good. And let's, under an talk, hour. let's talk about. Um, so you have water soluble fertilizer, and then you have time release fertilizer. So like Osmocote. It, yeah, Osmocote, uh, Nutricote. Um, thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, brother. Um, and it, and it's really personal preference. Um, if if you're growing outside and or you just don't have time, you can sprinkle a little bit of time release fertilizer in in every one of your pots, and then all you have to worry about is for, is just watering, and then it gets for a, a small dose of fertilizer every time you water, and that's great. But if you want a little bit more control, um. You can always do a weak solution of water soluble fertilizer. And then also you can't really do like a regular fertilizer and a bloom booster with with time release. So you have a little bit more control with the water soluble where you can, you know, three weeks out of the out of the month, you can use a, a regular fertilizer and then do one one bloom booster feeding per month. So it just really depends on one, how big your collection is, two, how insane you are like me, um, or three, <laughs> you know, um, how much time you have. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. Now I was told Elizabeth the video, uh, not Elizabeth Mercedes, the lady I just went to go visit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I asked her. She uses a lot of time release, and I and I said, you know, I've used it before, and it burns some of my plants. And she puts it on the edge of the potting. She never puts it in the center. She says if you put it on the edge, that's more than enough. Huh. What do you feel about that? Because I, I have put it on the center and I've lost like fowls. I've lost them. And I was told by another person, oh, don't put them so close to the stem or to the center. And then when I went to um, Mercedes' house, she said exactly the same. She said, put the Osmoco. But she also uses, which I love using, is Super Thrive. I use eight eight drops to a gallon because that stuff yeah. is potent. Super Thrive is good. Um, liquid seaweed, liquid seaweed is awesome. That's really good. I, I love need to this get stuff. It when has... do you use, when do you use liquid seaweed? Huh? When do you use it together with your fertilizers monthly, or do you do it? No, I don't. No, use, I use it uh, basically once spring starts and growing season through summer. And then I kind of lay off on fall and winter only in growing season because it has those natural cytokinins and auxins. The auxins are root stimulators. So when we're in spring time and we have lots of roots growing, you want to you want to do it. And I only I use it every other week. Okay. I don't use it every week. I don't. And it's a separate supplement from my fertilizer, because if you if you. Um, if you 
if you mix it in with all your fertilizer and your cow mag, and then you have your liquid seaweed, it there's, too much, it. there's too much going on. Yeah. Um, That's what I thought. Now, do you, do you use, since you're only using it every other week, do you use a full dosage, uh, your ratio, or do you cut it in half like a week dosage? No, I, I, I mean, I'll use anywhere from a teaspoon to a tablespoon. Okay. Right. Hey, Joe. Yes, I'll be there at Port St. Lucie April 1st. And that's no joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be here all week. Um, but yeah, I love liquid seaweed. I'm actually working on another type of supplement um, for my own branding. And um, I'm really excited to be trying to... One, I've been you know, testing it and two, uh, studying it. And, um, um, I'm trying to keep it all natural and not use any chemicals and stuff. That's really pet friendly, kid friendly, safe for us. And that way it's not really harmful to our, our livelihood and health. Yeah. Don't mix the, don't mix the seaweed, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, and you can always you can always go follow us or send us a message <clears throat> on our social media or through YouTube. Don't forget to go follow my YouTube. Um, and then Re go repeat speak. yours because you you I don't know if you skip, but uh, what's yours at the Orchid Den? At yeah, Instagram. The, uh, on Instagram, I'm at the dot orchid dot den. Um, Facebook, it's the Orchid Den. YouTube, it's the Orchid Den. Instagram's just weird. And my Instagram is um, naturenell22. I, I don't have a Facebook because honestly, I don't really use it. <laughs> Personal, but it's like I never in there. I stopped using it years ago. Yep. Real quick, Kelly asked about uh, Epsom salt. Uh, if you're using CalMed, you don't really need to use uh, Epsom salt because magnesium. Um, you're over. You could. You're. Could you over salt your water for plants? Yes and no. Um, because I've used. Now that you say that, I have used uh, Epsom salt after the cold weather. A lot of the leaves got yellow. Yeah, and I bought and a lot of them back. That's a good time. But I only did it for that period. That's a good time to use it, as especially when like plants are like distressed or yellowing from um, from from stuff, then yeah, throw that CalMag on there. CalMag and Epsom salt. That's what I've used. I've used both, but only during that time. Uh, and they they really came back pretty pretty well. I mean, yeah. I mean, I would, I would use one or the other. I prefer cow mag because you're getting the, yeah, me too. the magnesium. Whereas, and if you're just using, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm reading, I'm reading as we're talking to, I'm if, you're, if you're double dosing, yes. Um, I don't, I don't think it, you can, it's really easy to overdose, but I will, I always err on the side of being precautious. Um, so if you're using a cow mag, you don't, don't use Epsom salt. Okay, good. One yep. less thing to use. Yeah. All right. We're done. We're 58 minutes in. We made it. <laughs> like dissect. I really like when you go into like the deep part of it, because then we understand like it's better. And yes. I know a lot of people have so many questions all the time. And then I, I feel that we've answered a lot of those questions on the thread. <laughs> I still a repotting part for Josh's mom. Actually, I would have actually, to drive all the way to Jacksonville. <laughs> uh, actually, I probably Thank will you, be Terry. filming that. Um, so I can post it on like my YouTube channel. Um, so, Cause one, you don't, see too many really large plants like this being repotted uh here in the u.s um so it's it's kind it's of a hard, 
it's it's a feat. Mahalo, Kelly. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Marilyn. But yeah, um, I'll I'll probably be recording it. Um, make sure you guys go. Even if you're watching this as a rerun, smash that like button. Share it if you can. Yeah, uh, there's 49 people and 29 likes. This helps get education the out. Not, the math is not working there. <laughs> right. This helps us educate a lot of people. This helps grow the channel. This helps us um, reach out to other people. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, someone messaged me the other day, about, and I'm like shaking my head, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, please, no. Um, there's lots of misinformation on YouTube about orchids. Um, but we do this. I love the ice one. They, people still believe in that. Put yeah, ice on orchids. Or wa water, water culture for phalaenopsis or yeah. uh, lots of stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Thank you, Joe. Please stop. So thanks, Joe. Um, thanks, Jill. So make sure you guys even smash that like button. Even if you're watching the rerun. Go visit the Orchid Den. Go visit. Um, make sure you subscribe to Nature Nell. Also, this helps. Yeah, so this way we can bring you more lives because we, yeah. you know, we want to make this something. This is just the beginning. We're just learning how to do all this stuff, and yeah. it can get better, and it could become a workshop. You know, and this really is becoming a, a monthly thing, and we're hitting on topics. Also, <laughs> leave a comment below. What do you guys want to talk about next time? Right. This helps us. This helps us gauge and. One, engage with you as a viewer, but two, helps us um, see what you guys need help with or want to talk about in the future. So this, this is basically what we gauge our, our next topic on. So leave a comment below and, um, and let us know what you want to talk about next time. Awesome. All right, Thanks, guys. guys. So thank you very much for hanging out the 62 minutes and five seconds with us. <laughs> Nine. I, now, now's when the sun is starting to come down <laughs> and see that beautiful glow. <laughs> Next time we'll start a little later. I though. thought that was the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> no, today wasn't whiskey. It was Bloody Mary and vodka. And it was a little oh, bit vodka. It was just You're more better. for the So anyways, guys, I will see you in my next episode. I am Nelson. I'm Josh from the Orchid Den. You've been watching Nature Now. And remember to always keep it green. Keep it green. <laughs> see you next I wore time. This, I wore right. this just for you, buddy. I'll I like you it. Soon. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go surfing. <laughs> All right, guys. Happy growing. <laughs>